This video is not for persons under the age of 13. By watching this video, you are declaring that you are above 13 years of age. Hello and welcome to this watercolour tutorial. This time round we're looking at Dina Tollefson's challenge for us for January. That's the Red Rover Art Challenge if you, and I'll have details down below in the information uh, that explains that later. But we'll get on with that. We'll have a look at the painting, uh, but first of all, we'll start with the paints that I'm going to use. So let's look at that. Okay, red is a fairly broad expression, but here is the set of colours that I will be mainly using. And I may uh, have as a, a tonal control a bit of blue in there and uh, a, li a little bit of yellow but obviously we've got like an orangey red I think that's a cadmium red and then you've got a, a more pillar box red or a fire engine red there that which would be considered a primary red and uh, I think this is pyrrole red and then you start getting <clears throat> you start getting uh, closer to the magenta as you go bluer but uh, if you come back this way uh, you get yellower but also including in red there is uh, its pigment colour name is uh, red iron oxide or PR101 and I'll probably use that as well uh, that is used to make lots of different uh, brownie reds so we'll be using that and maybe a bit of yellow to create lighter tones so that's going to be my palette Here's the paper I'm working on. It, as you can see, it's De La Rone. It's uh, an A4 sheet, which uh, these are uh, measurements uh, in inches and in centimetres or millimetres in that case. It's a uh, £140 for you guys in America, which is uh, 300 grams cold press watercolour paper and it's their aquafine paper and i think it's a decent paper uh, it is uh as you can see cellulose it's not cotton but it does the job and um i've used it on quite a few occasions and it's not bad for the price that you get charged for this so i, I would say it's a good paper to use so that's his paper that we're working on. Let's move on to what we're going to be doing uh, as the artwork. Right, okay, we've got our picture. And what it is, as you can see, you can see several dog heads. You can free, see three dog heads. Right, this is the mythical creature Cerberus, the three-headed dog. And it's at the entrance of some... Uh, cave or whatever and it's all going to be fairly dark around the edges and then uh, Cerberus is going to be bright red and very red looking so uh, that's my idea or my concept that I want to have a look at so let's crack on and paint it just before we start Let's have a quick overview of potential brushes that we could use for this. 
Uh, for covering large areas, I've got these hake brushes, a, a large one or this smaller one here. Uh, that's just for generally getting a good coverage of basic cover, uh, colour over things. And then you can go a similar idea. This covers large areas, this pointed mop brush, but it's a bit more controlled that it, you can get around various areas so that's for slightly more detailed large scale areas and then we start getting into the detail of the painting itself so if I need anything to do fur with I've got this uh, if you can see uh, a rake brush and it's got that raking in it and it does do fur quite nicely that uh, for me detail brushes uh, it does look a bit big but you can get quite good detail with an awful lot of paint in there so I do like using this size of brush again it's a pointed mop and uh, for doing the very fine detail I'll be using this which is a, a Japanese calligraphy brush which has got a very very fine point to it so they, these are the brushes I potentially may use whether they get used I don't know that's all about the flow of the painting at any one time so and you ain't got to like shackle yourself to I must use these have a go see how it goes use whatever comes naturally to you so we'll move on to the painting then. Right, okay, we'll make a start by uh, spraying round the outer edge of the uh, picture. And I'm uh, going to do the background first with uh, lots of various red colours, as you can see. Mixing it in a little bit with a little bit of uh, yellowy orange. And uh, that gives it a bit of atmosphere. And we'll add a tiny bit of darker red in there just for uh, the outer edge we've let it dry for a bit now and I'm scraping off a little bit of the paint with some tissue paper uh, just to give that added extra bit of texture there so I'm happy with that and we're gonna start putting another layer on that uh, with the uh, purpley colours and this will basically frame the outer edge of the painting as we go. I'll allow that now to dry and go over with uh, another stronger solution of red again to uh, emphasise the redness of the paint itself. I'm using the hake brush for this as well, the big brush to uh, cover large amounts of area, uh, creating texture in the painting as well as I'm going along. And again, I'm taking off some more paint with the tissue. And I'll move on to the inner area and I'm going to put some yellow into this just to give it a, a glow as the entrance where has a little bit more light in it and blend that into the uh, colours that we've already done and to balance that out I'm going to put some darker deeper colours to reintroduce uh, some uh, darkness to that outer edge of the painting I'm now using the pointed mop brush to get various bits of dark detail around the outer edge again uh, make it, making it look a bit rocky uh, and craggy as it's like a cave entrance and uh, I will now put some um, shadowing in as the light casts a, a shadow forward to us moving on to the back of the animal I'm putting some red in unfortunately I lost some of the footage uh, just filling in the uh, image and as, as you can see it's jumped and all I really did is fill in uh, with red in that area but now I'm starting to get some definition in with a much deeper darker red 
so uh, we'll be able to start seeing certain areas of the painting uh, coming out as being particular things. Well, I'm still using the uh, pointed mop brush and I'm on the left hand uh, side of the uh, animal uh, painting the head in there and I'm, I'm trying to put different types of red in and let them bleed into one another uh, in a natural kind of a way and uh, various bits of detail it might look like one big splodge of red at the moment but we'll fix that later on I'm taking little bits out to create contrast by just using water so I've now moved on to the uh, detail bits and I'm using me uh, me calligraphy brush and uh, getting little bits of detail in and things like that. I've done the eyes and I've made them very uh, yellow glowing yellow colour and we'll keep on working at these things. I've put a little bit of green in there in those eyes to uh, give it some sort of pupil or whatever and we're starting to get dark areas in now and I've gone for a fairly dark colour to make it almost cartoony in a uh, in a graphic illustration kind of a way because that's where the way I feel the painting is actually going so I'm putting very very dark browns in there they're not black they're very very dark and I keep emphasizing uh, these areas of dark so that we can get some kind of uh, representation there that defines the image and we don't just do that on the animal we do it all the way around the rest of the picture I'm getting little bits of lines that represent cracky areas in the picture and we keep building these things up and at this point I put a, a final coat or two of uh, red to re-emphasize that red in the uh, painting as you can see there a dab of yellow here and there and I think we're done okay we're at the end of the uh, painting now uh, we ended up coming out with a, a, a basic colour but in red uh, in a very illustrative kind of expressive brush strokey kind of painting but this has been my uh, challenge painting uh, for uh, Dina Tollefson's hashtag Red Rover Art Challenge. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you again in another creative art video sometime soon. Bye.